what you need to know. We're going to start off with the, the very first step is you kind of have to know what your expenses are in order to set up a plan to manage that budget. Uh, so what you need to know, monthly expenses, variable expenses, what your average income is, and really what you need to save so that we can make sure that those slow months that we might have for our business are covered, we can still pay those bills as they come in. So we're gonna have a couple of tools. We're gonna to go over the monthly bills, the monthly variable expenses, monthly debt expenses, annual bills, annual variable expenses. All of that needs to be included in this plan that you have. And we have a couple of ways. Um, we, we have a lot of information at your fingertips and I kind of go look through your last, uh, last year of statements, kind of document the bills that you have, look at your monthly statement, start writing things down. We're gonna go ahead and use this tool. And I want us to start thinking about what bills we pay on a monthly basis, things that we pay every single month without fail that are kind of necessary. So I want you in the chat, go ahead and start typing in. I, this is going to be kind of similar to some of our other budgeting ones that we've done because some of the steps are the same. We got to write these down and know what our expenses are. So monthly expenses fixed. These are bills that you pay every month without fail, has a due date. It's the same amount every single month. Felicia, thank you. Rent is a big one. Welcome to San Diego. It's very expensive to live here in this state, in this city. But that is a big one. I want that's usually the top one when we talk about those necessary expenses. What are the things that we have to pay? Rent is a big one. Having that roof over your head is very important. What other some car insurance? Yes, that's a really big one. It is requirement that you have to have car insurance. And this is where we're going to write this down. Um, we're going to write all of this information down. Um, Car HOA, HOA. Yes, HOA is another really big one that ours is $360 a month and they just raised it. So we have to take care of that expense or we don't get to stay there anymore. What other fixed expenses? Think small now, you guys. Think smaller. What are some smaller fixed expenses that has a due date that you pay the same amount every single month without fail? It Maybe you get charged automatically to your account. Phone bill, yes. Yes, that's, it's funny how 40 years ago we didn't have cell phones and now I see people who are paying $300 a month. Netflix, yes, now we're thinking of those little ones that we might not be aware of and they add up really quickly. We're, like, we're not paying cable, internet. Yes, you guys are thinking awesome, yes. Um, now, what was it, anybody have anyone that's $1.99? Canvas, internet, yes, you guys are doing so awesome, uh, yeah. I pay $1.99 for storage for my phone. I pay $4.99 for uh, Netflix, not Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, there's Hulu, there's all of those other little things. I want us writing them all down. Those are those fixed expenses. Write them all down, whatever they may be, however much they are. Even if it's a dollar, I want us writing that amount down. That's an expense that we have. Then we have the variable expenses. These are ones that we also pay every single month without fail, you have to pay these or you don't survive. What are some variable expenses that you guys can think of a really important one that you can spend more, you can spend less, but I still groceries, yes. Um, you can go out and buy you know, organic food, you can buy really expensive steaks, or you can eat Top Ramen because you're a student and you don't have any money. So we have this wide range of how much you can spend on those groceries, but they are a necessary expense. Even if you have a slow month with that variable income, it doesn't mean you don't have to eat. So we still have to write those things down, okay? So now we're gonna keep going. Anything else that you guys pay that variable that might, you guys have water bill, electricity, Yes, I think Andrea has done this one before. Yeah, water bill and electricity. They do have a due date, but you do have a little bit of control over how much you spend in those categories. Electricity is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite topics because I moved into this condo and my first bill was $150. And I was like, that's just ridiculous. So I started using all the tips and all the tools that they give you on their website. I was unplugging things when I wasn't using my cell phone charger, was not plugged in. I unplugged my hair dryer. I got a power strip for my TV and turned it off when I wasn't watching TV. 
I got a power strip for my washer and dryer. Because if you have things that are plugged in, it's drawing a current 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whether you're using it or not, whether you're sleeping or using that appliance, you're still paying for the energy when it's plugged in. So by using that power strip and turning it off on my microwave oven, on my washer and dryer, on my TV, on my computer, I unplug the toaster, I unplug my hair dryer, my cell phone chargers, my next bill was $49, okay? So that puts $1,200 in my pocket each year because I'm not paying for that electricity. So that's an expense that I have but I have a little control. Water is another one. Vendor fees. Yeah, if you're having kind of business where you have to pay fees on that one, we want to make sure we're including that in my plan. So we're writing all of those down. The next one we're going to take a look at is our monthly debt payment. So this is really important. I actually have this really cool tool that I'm going to share with you guys. And I'm going to email this to anybody who's interested. This is a tool. Um, hopefully you guys can see this. <laughs> Um, this is the tool that we use to kind of go over and kind of jog our memories for some of those expenses that we might not think about, water, trash, any regular prescriptions you might pay. Um, and then we go down here, here's those variable expenses, gas, groceries, if you have any parking fees for your business, uh, meals out, that's a huge one. People tend to spend double what they think they spend in that category. Um, hair, nails, entertainment, if you do any sports, I am a hardcore volleyball player and I have fees when I go play. I do tournaments, things like that. Um, I like to read a lot. If you donate, if you have pets, these are all those, those variable expenses. But now we're gonna go to the debt section. And so I want us using this to write down all of this information. You, I want you to know the interest rates you're paying if you have any debts. And they usually bury that on the second or third page. It's not really easy to find. They bury that so that you don't know how much you're paying in interest. But I want you looking at the statements for all of your creditors and filling this information in. I want the balance. I want the due date. I want the interest rate, the minimum payment, and the limit because all of this information is going to help us set up a plan to get rid of this debt. Like usually we get into debt because we haven't planned for some of our expenses and that'll be our next slide on here. But I want us writing all of this down because again, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish is going to drive how I attack this debt. So I want us to use this, write down all this information. If I have an auto loan, I wanna know how many months I have left to pay on it what the interest rate is, the minimum payment. Uh, and we're gonna use this information. If I'm trying to be debt-free as quickly as I can, then I am going to attack this in order of interest rate. I'm gonna go after this one that's at 26.99% because if I throw $200 at this one, that $100 extra goes strictly towards reducing this balance. And next month, I'm not losing 26.99% on that $100. Or if I throw it at this one, it's I'm only gaining 9.99%. So if I'm trying to be debt free, I'm going to attack this in order of the interest rate. There's a really great website called powerpay.org, where you go in and plug in all the balances, minimum payment and interest rates, and it will show you the best way to attack this where it's going to cost you the least amount of money. And again, it's going to be attacking strictly by interest rate. Now, if my goal is to improve my credit, and I'm just gonna throw this in as a little extra because I think this is important. You're gonna see these calculations over here. 30% of your credit score is based on having your balance at less than 30% of the limit. So when I throw the balance in and I throw the limit in, this calculates what that 30% is. And this tells me how much I need to pay that balance down by in order to get those points back in my credit score. Every single credit card that I get below this 30% is gonna give me back 15 to 20 points in your score. So if I'm trying to improve my credit, because maybe I'm trying to do something for my business, then I'm gonna go attack this one and get that down below 150. And then I'm gonna see that 15 to 20 point increase in my score. Then I'm gonna go after card two, get that down by $700, get another 15 to 20 points. And that's if I'm trying to improve my credit. So that's, that's how we attack the debt if I'm trying to improve my credit. The last little bit is if I'm trying to open my cash flow, right? So if I'm trying to reduce my expenses, my minimum payment on this one is 25, this is 20, this is 100, and my minimum payment on the car loan is 250. I only owe $2,500 on this one, right? 
So if I'm trying to open my cash flow, if I go after this one and pay this off, I open up $250 and reduce my expenses by quite a bit. If I pay this one off, I only get $20 back in my cash flow. So if I'm trying to open and reduce my expenses, I'm going to be looking at that minimum payment, right? So all of that information is really, really important when it comes to figuring out how I'm going to pay. I want to know all this information. So I see that there is a uh, question and answer. If you pay off your card in full each month, do you still have to be spending only 30% of your limit? So there's a trick here. Um, if you pay your card off in full, that's fantastic. However, you have to know when that creditor reports their balances to the credit bureaus because that's what is going to get reported and impact your score. So as an example, California Coast Credit Union, all of our credit cards are due on the 25th, but we report on the 1st. So if you pay your credit card off in full on the 25th, but then you charge something on the 28th, there's going to be an answer. There is going to be um, a balance that gets reported. So if you are, say it's due on the 5th, but they report on the 25th and you keep using that credit card, there might be a balance reported that's higher than 30% of that limit. And you could still be hurting your score, even if you pay it off in full every single month. So know when your creditors report it is not the same as the due date. It's not even the same as when they cut that interest cycle off. So look at if you have Credit Karma, it's right underneath the name of the lender. And there's a really cool app and it shows you when it reports, when that balance is reported. So it is good to pay it off in full each month, um, but you do have to know when it gets reported because that's what's impacting the credit score. It's a great question. <laughs> okay, so we've written all this stuff down and I, I know what my minimum payments are. Now we're gonna look at these periodic expenses because for me especially, this is where credit card debt comes from. And if you have variable income and you're not thinking about these expenses and then all of a sudden you have this really big bill that happens on a slow month, that is where the credit cards come into play. So I want us thinking about my periodic expenses, um, both fixed and variable. So I'm gonna go and think about periodic expenses fixed is maybe a bill that you pay once a year. Maybe you pay twice a year. So what are some expenses that you guys can think of that you pay once or twice a year? Property tax is a huge one. Yes, thank you. That is a big one. And I see people come in all of the time who want a loan to pay their property taxes, even though they know it happens every single year, right? So if I know that I've got $4,800 in property taxes, I want to divide that 4,800 by 12, get that down to a monthly amount and set that money aside every single month. So I include that. Car registration is another one. Great. Mine's $240. I do $20, $20 a month. I'm writing those bills down and I'm including that in my plan so I know what I have to earn in order to pay all of my expenses. Any other fixed expenses that people pay once or twice a year? Anybody have any memberships that they pay maybe once a year that you can think of that you maybe shop online or shop in person anything that you can think of that you pay once a year amazon yeah that that's they're, we're doing the, the prime shopping right now uh, lots of really great deals going on with the prime day um uh, yeah auto insurance home insurance i pay my auto insurance twice a year so I'm setting money aside every single month so I can see how that expense is impacting that bottom line. Um, but that's, you know, it's $1,000 a year, $100 a month. I have to pay that. So I'm putting that money and including that in my plan. Fantastic. Okay, now we're going to move on to the variable expenses, my favorite, favorite category, especially when you've got variable income. Because you are not really thinking about this when you're looking at budgets. Most people don't. And when you look at all of the online tools that they have, they don't make it really easy for you to figure out what your periodic expenses are. So I want you to think about some expenses you've had that are over $500 in the past five years. So in the chat, can you guys write down any bills that you've had, maybe three to $500, in the past three to five years that you've had to pay that you can think of off the top of your head. Co-pays for the hospital, oh, you guys. 
I am the poster child for medical expenses. Yes. I had a $300 a day copay for three days in the hospital for a blood infection, $900 out of my pocket that I had to pay for. Dentist. Yes. I had to pay $480 for a crown. These are things that we have. And as we get older, we have more of them. Prescriptions. Uh, yeah, the, all of these things are things that we have that, you know, I pay. Here's another one. And we have a car that you've had any glasses. I do once every three to four years, $200. You guys are thinking, I love it. Mm -hmm. Now that your car, what are some expenses you have for your car? Vehicle expenses. Thank you. Tires every two to three years. I drive a lot. And that's seven, $800. I have to make sure that I'm planning for that because this isn't a surprise. I have this really awesome handout that I'm going to give to you guys. Here's an example of what we have uh, breaking down the cost for this expense. The, I'm looking at every category and I'm breaking this down and figuring out how much I need to save for it. Oil changes, have to get it done. Tires, have to pay for it. 30, 60,000 mile checkup. If I want my car to keep working, regular maintenance, windshield wipers, brakes, batteries, and then my DMV renewal. So this is $1,300 a year. I need to break that down and make sure I'm thinking about those when I'm writing down all of my expenses, right? So I have this really cool hand I'm gonna share with you guys. Uh, where is it, where is it? Let me get back. There it is. Okay, so it's really small. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Then we talked about the auto. Let's talk about home expenses. So these are expenses also that we have, if, especially if you have a business that you are relying on that cell phone for people to call you to get business. You're relying on the computer to get things scheduled. We have the TV we have to replace, mattress that has to get replaced, towels, sheets, kitchen decor. All I just had to replace my... Um, my blender, and then I'm a plant person. I have plants that are all a part of my home expenses. And then if you're a homeowner, I have this other really cool, I don't see it open, where is it? Oh, we created this one, which is thinking about all of the big expenses in the house. If I'm a homeowner, I have to replace the refrigerator and the dishwasher and the garbage disposal and the TV and the Blu-ray and the streaming and the coffee table and the lamps and the bookshelves and the mattress and the dressers and even at kids, now you gotta go over there. It just keeps going. We just had to pay $1,800 for a garage door because it broke and crashed down. So if you're a homeowner, we have those expenses that we want you thinking about. And then my other favorite one that I see end up on credit cards is gifts and holidays. And I have this amazing handout that these are all the different events that we spend money on throughout the year. And then across the top, you put the names of people that you spend money on, put yourself in the first line, first grid, and then go down this list and think about, okay, New Year's Day, I spent money on food and drink. So that's my general expense for the holiday. Valentine's Day, I did little gifts for my kids. Easter, when they were younger, I have twins. I did Easter dresses and Easter baskets and Easter bonnets and Easter pigs and Easter dye and Easter decorations and Easter dinner. It added up. Mother's Day, cards give flowers. Father's Day, he gets a card. Fourth of July, we do a lot of barbecues. Labor Day, Halloween, I buy a costume, but I also buy candy decorations. We might do a Halloween party. Christmas is the gifts for everybody. And then the general, we do a Christmas tree. We do a Christmas event. We do Christmas baking. We do Christmas dinner. Christmas gets expensive. Um, anniversaries, birthdays, graduations, weddings. And then you're going to get, if you have kids, now we have their birthday party. You know, the expense for if you get a jumpy or you get ponies or you do little bass, you know, little gift bags to give out to everybody. Um, and then we get this annual total that we're going to look at and see how that impacts that bottom line. When I first did this, my total was $4,800 because I went a little crazy at Christmas. But I want us looking at this and including this in my plan. Okay, so we're, we're including all of these expenses. Back to here. Okay. The other thing I want you thinking about when you are self-employed is as your own employer, you have to plan for paying your own taxes. 
us who have a paycheck, it's automatically taken out and I don't have to worry about getting that set aside. You know, I, I have the 30, 40% gone out of my paycheck already when I get it. When you're self-employed, you have to pay it. You also have to worry about the self-employment tax, which is covering the um, Medi-Cal and Social Security. So not only income tax, but also the self-employment tax. So I have these links for you. Knowing your own tax burden, go in and fill up this information. Self-employment tax kind of taxes form that you fill out to kind of figure out what you need to pay for that. And then there's this really great website that kind of goes over maybe some of the expenses you might think about that are tax deductible, right? So you might have, if you have a dedicated home office, you can write off some of the SDG, the internet access, phone travel, all of that stuff can be associated with it. So this is a really great website to look at how you can reduce that tax burden. But if you're a sole proprietorship and you are getting income, any kind of income, what we recommend is set up a separate account for taxes. That's one of the best things about CalCoast. You can have seven different savings and title it however you want. Have a dedicated tax savings account that anytime you get income, you're putting aside 25, 30, whatever your tax burden is, you fill out that form um, and you can figure out what you need to set aside. We recommend at least 30% of every bit of income that you get set aside into that tax savings. Typically, you have to pay on a quarterly basis. We do recommend setting that up so that you can make sure that is taken care of and you don't get stuck with this huge bill at the end of the year and have to go into their plan. Direct sales consultants, if any any time that you're getting money, um, we want you putting that money aside. So I just I would just any deposit you get, put 25% automatically into that tax account. So you're planning ahead for those taxes. So we want to make sure we're putting that money aside. Will you share today's slides with us? Absolutely. This is all going to be an automatic recording that you'll get a copy of, but I am happy to actually share the PowerPoint directly with you because it has all my little notes, all the things that I talk about today. I have a lot of that information in the notes section. So I am happy to send this to you with all the extra notes on there. It's also gonna be recorded and put on our YouTube page. So you, if you don't get a chance to listen to it, you wanna go and listen to it again, this will all be on there as well. So it's, yeah, it's great information. So important that you include those tax payments <laughs> in there um, because you have that bill and you have to take care of it. Okay, so next thing I wanna talk about, the very last expense is the unexpected, especially when you are self-employed or getting you know variable income. These are things that unemployment, you don't have to worry about that so much, but if there's a fire or a car accident, or we talked a little bit about those medical bills, um, we talk, you know, I've been out of work for a year when I was recovering from a back surgery. So if I am self-employed and I don't have any money set aside, I want to make sure that I'm putting that fund aside for that to make sure that I'm covered. And then I don't like to talk about it, but sometimes people do pass away and are those expenses covered? I want us kind of planning ahead for that too. So moving on from that sad subject, we don't want to talk too much about that. Now, if you are not sure what your variable expenses are, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, when I filled mine out, I thought, oh, I spend maybe $300 on groceries, maybe $50 on meals out, we don't go out that often, and then I tracked. And I was spending $600 a month on groceries and $250 a month on meals out and had no idea. And I'll tell you, in the 14 years that I've been doing this, most people spend double what they think they spend in meals out. That $4.99, $7.99, $10.99, it adds up really, really fast. So I recommend tracking. There's a couple of tools on here um, that you can use online, Mint, uh, paper journals. You can do phone apps. There are some listed on here. I also have a couple of, I think are very helpful, um, kind of gives you a little more detail that you're breaking it down into each of the categories. So this is a tracking sheet that I use. Um, this top section is all my day-to-day, week-to-week -week stuff. The bottom is my periodic expenses. And I do this because if I go to Costco, um, here's a question for you guys. What can you buy at Costco or even Target? What can you buy at Target? What, what's the one word answer that 
everything. Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> everything. I could live under the roof of Costco and never leave. I've got chicken. I've got fuzzy socks. I've got a treadmill. I've got everything that I need. But all that's going to show up on my statement is Costco. Maybe I got $40 cash back and I went to the movies. It's still just going to say Costco. So I do recommend when you're first tracking is get receipts for at least a month, right? And track where every bit of your funds are going so that you really get that awareness of what you're spending in each of these categories. So I can see, oh, I go to get, you know, I, we go to soup plantation every Sunday and we go to get pizza after soccer practice and we go to Jamba Juice after Girl Scouts. I want to see where that money is going so then I can be aware of what those monthly needs are and maybe I can change them because it's a lot. So here's a, um, I do have actually another tracking sheet on here that I can share with you a different format if we don't like that format. So let me get over here. This one is um, a different format that we have. It's kind of a little bit easier because you just kind of go through your statement. And I can just fill in the information, what I spent in gas, groceries. And so this is the monthly, this is the periodic. It's kind of the same format, but separated and going down instead of across. So either one of them, you know, either one that works for you, I do recommend doing this for at least 60 days, at least 30 days. 60 days is better because what happens in December typically doesn't happen in January. So we want to make sure that we're keeping track of all of those expenses. Okay, back on to here, the PowerPoint. Okay, now we're going to talk about, oh, quick pop quiz. I like these ones. Let's see if you were listening. <laughs> What is an example of an unexpected expense? Is it automobile tires, car accident, new shoes, cell phone, or all of the above? So this is unexpected. So we have some expenses that are expected. What's unexpected? And if you don't know, Andrea answered it for you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, expected. So expected would be tires. Like you don't expect your tires to last forever. So we know that you're going to have to buy tires. Same thing with shoes. I play volleyball. I need to get a new pair every year. They don't last forever. And my cell phone guaranteed is not going to last forever. Mine is two years in and it's starting to falter, right? Oh, unexpected. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. Unless a tire goes unexpectedly, I have had a flat tire. So yes, that is an unexpected expense. And the cell phone once broke unexpectedly, but you expect that, right? You know it's not gonna last forever. You know that you're gonna have to get a new cell phone no matter what. It's not going to last five years, six years, 10 years. They just don't. So we do expect that we're gonna have to replace that cell phone at some point. Unexpectedly, yes, that could happen. I went through a memorable six month period where I went through three cell phones. Um, so yeah, that could be unexpected, but we do know that has to be replaced. The car accident knock on wood never happens to you, but if it does, I want to be prepared for that too, because there's a $500 copay out the door for me to pay that deductible. And if I don't have it, it goes on a credit card. So that's one of those things that we want to, yeah, we want the cell phone to last forever. I would love that. Mine's two and a half years in and it's starting to glitch. So looking at a new one. Okay. Now. If you have variable income, it is vital to have a safety net when you have variable income. If you have a bad month, you still have those monthly expenses. And now you know what they are and how quickly it adds up. So most financial gurus are going to say you should have at least an emergency fund of three months. When you have variable income, I recommend six because especially in that first year, you're really not quite sure what those expenses are going to be or how the income is going to come in. Um, maybe you have a really, really crazy you know, November and December, it's super busy, and then January and February, it's just super, super dead slow. So I want to make sure that we have the funds to cover for the what ifs, right? So you have a vendor who you did all this business for and they owe you $5,000 and like, oh, I don't have the money, I'll pay you next month. You still have bills. Maybe you have a slow month because, again, November, December was crazy. Now, January, there's not as much income coming in. Maybe you're injured. So I'm, you know, been poster child for this. I had back surgery. I was out for a year. I had shoulder surgery on my right one five years ago, shoulder surgery on my left one two years ago, and I was out of work for three months and wasn't able to work. If you're self-employed and you're not able to work, 
how are you going to pay? You still have to eat, still have to pay those expenses, right? So I wanna make sure that we have those funds and, and until in that first year that you figure out how your business works, if you have slow months, or I want you to have that cushion, okay? I want you to make sure that we have the funds. So in the beginning, what I recommend, especially when we're going through this, is to really go through, now that we've got that list, go down the list and figure out ways that you can reduce that spending so we can increase that saving. You know, so I have a couple of examples in my notes on here that I'll send to you. I had a cell phone that I was paying $139 a month. I went into a family plan with my two grown daughters and my best friend. I'm now paying $35 for the exact same phone, the exact same business, right? Um, I went and stopped $250 in meals out. God, I don't need muffins that much. Soup plantation, I don't need to go that often. Let me reduce that and maybe go once a quarter so that I still get to enjoy it and still enjoy my life, but I don't need to spend that much money on muffins. I, I looked at that and said, no. Uh, my sdg &E bill went from $150 down to $49. I went to the water and I got some things, things that you can put into the tank that displaces the water so less water gets flushed. And now I'm spending less for the water bill. Um, so there's a lot of really tips. You kind of go down that list and search for ways to save in every category. Auto insurance. I was with one company. We actually just partnered with Wawanisa a couple of months, like last year. Um, so I'm with Wawanisa and as a CalCoast member, I get a 5% discount. So I am calling every year and researching and making sure that I've got the best deal. And I'm looking at ways to reduce that cost out of pocket. So now that I know this, I want to reduce that spending so I can increase my savings, make sure that I got that six months recommended just in case. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about is it's really hard <laughs> when you have these flush months where maybe I get 10,000, then this month where I only get 2,000. So it's, it's to help yourself, we have this recommendation that kind of pay yourself, be your own payroll manager and pay yourself a paycheck. So if you have all of your income going into a savings account and you pay yourself either on a weekly, bi-weekly, you know, first and the 15th or monthly, however it works for you, give yourself a set amount and that way you're more in control of those funds. You know what your needs are because we filled out those monthly expenses and your variable expenses. And we're gonna pay ourselves that weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, however you wanna do it so that I have that set amount coming in every single month and just kind of regulate the amount a little bit. And when I have the months where I have extra income, that savings account's gonna grow. It's gonna be a little bit easier for me to get to that six months. And then when I have the slow months, I have that cushion that I don't really need to worry about it so much if I've got that six months cushion. So unless you're living beyond your income and then it's really hard to get ahead anyway. So pay attention to that. Try not to spend more than's coming in because we don't wanna keep depleting that savings account. Try to reduce that, okay? Another really helpful way when we have variable income is doing it, it's called a zero budget. So this is the money that I have in my account listed in order of priority, right? We went through all those expenses. So I'm gonna go back over to this handout really quick. Um, and this is that, that monthly plan. So I filled this in and I know what all my expenses are, you know, my, my rent 1600, my HOA 340, gas electric is 50, home phone don't have, cable don't have 50. So I'm just plugging in all of those expenses that I have. Um, auto insurance I pay. So these are my main monthly expenses that I have. I have Netflix. So what is necessary, right? If I put these in order of what is necessary, what is the worst thing that's going to happen if I don't pay this bill? That's a necessary bill. I don't pay my rent or my mortgage. I don't have a roof over my head. That's kind of important. So I, you know, kind of go down and put necessary in front of this. My HOA is necessary. My gas electric is necessary. Internet, I mean, push comes to shove. I could probably, my business, I have to have it if you're self-employed, but if I can do my business out of someone else's internet or, you know, I don't know, but I, that's kind of the eh, necessary want, needs and wants, um, cell phone I need to have, but maybe I have my Hulu. I mean, really how many, I have Disney. I have, what else do I have? I have Amazon, which I paid out of my Amazon Prime. And then we have HBO Max because we had to watch Game of Thrones. 
these are not necessary. What's the worst thing that's going to happen if I don't pay these? I'm trying to reduce my expenses and, and I pay the necessary things and I just don't have the money for these. I don't get to watch Game of Thrones. I can wait, right? It's not the worst. That's not the end of the world. I still have to pay gas and groceries. Those are some really big expenses, but meals out, I don't have to eat out. You know, I have a choice in that. I can hand wash, I can do my own hair, like all of these other things, the, the streaming services, these are all not necessary. So if we put this in order of needs and wants, most necessary down to the least necessary and pay the expenses as they come in, uh, make sure you have that roof over your head. You don't have to have four music streaming services, right? And then we just create that new plan each month, just save this and create a new one each month. Uh, make sure we have the savings. Now, one of the things that I'm going to recommend for you guys is setting up individual accounts. Um, for me, this was the biggest lifesaver when I started doing this 14 years ago to get me out of debt, keep me out of debt, is and planning ahead. We call this the six Ps. Prior proper planning prevents poor performance. I'm setting money aside for my auto. I'm setting money aside for vacation, for gifts, for home, for fun, for my health expenses. If you got pets, we had a vet bill that was $1,500. Uh, my annual fees and whatever goals I might have. So I have this really cool periodic expense calculator handout. And we go in and we figured out what I need for my auto repairs. You only need $1,000 a year, that's $83 a month, that's $42 I get paid biweekly, $42 a paycheck. But I, I have an auto repair savings and I treat this like my rent. I treat this like my cell phone. I do this and I don't touch the money unless it's for my car. I have a vacation and fun. If I want to go see Imagine Dragons and the tickets are $100, I have the funds. I want to go see Taming of the Shrew. I want to go and go to Lake Tahoe for my birthday. I've got the money set aside for it. Clothing, gifts, here's all my fixed expenses. So I actually have each of these individual accounts and I set this money aside every single paycheck so that I make sure I have the funds and I don't rely. And I, I, again, I treat this like my monthly bill. I do this every single paycheck. It's very, very helpful um, in order to get ahead and make sure I have the funds. All right, so we figure out what we need. We know our monthly expenses. We have a plan. We know that we have to get that savings and we've got some ideas on how to reduce some of those expenses. And I have a really cool handout on that too that I will be able to email that to you. We will have your email from the list. I will be happy to email this to all of you guys with all of the handouts, because I do feel that each of these tools can help make this a little bit easier. And the really cool thing about this cash flow plan, so it has my income that I'm setting myself. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna plan $3,000 is my, anything I make extra more than 3,000, I'm putting into my savings account. Um, my periodic expenses, there's actually a calculator right here that my DMV is $240. I have Costco. Um, I do have Amazon Prime. Um, and I do have a timeshare. So I do $34. And this shows $68 a month. And it automatically floods here, which is really helpful. And then the periodic expenses, kind of all the different things and what you need to think about. Do you have these? Um, if you've got kids, you know, they do activities, camp, summer lessons, zoo, you know, all those fun things. But, um, you know, fill this out for yours. So say I do that auto repairs, filling this out, $1,000 for that. Household items, I do $1,000. Medical dental, I do 500 Just kind of complete this. And it, again, it floods automatically in here for you so that you can see how that impacts that bottom line. Here's those fixed expenses with the due dates. Here's those variable expenses. Here's the debt payments. And then the bottom line shows me, am I living within my income with all those expenses? And if not, I need to figure out a way to reduce those expenses in some way. So that's how you plan when you have variable income. Pay yourself, set up the accounts, plan ahead, have the savings, make sure we have the funds for those lean months when things do happen. Um, and you have all the tools that you need to do this. So. I'm gonna email this to all of you guys. This is also a really great resource. There's information regarding the variable expenses here on this website, calcocu.org slash enrich. This is a really cool, there's tools, courses, videos, articles, information on every single category of finance you can think of. 
that is completely free. If you go onto our website, you'll be able to get access to this. And then this will also be on our YouTube page. There's a bunch of other recordings on there as well. If you want to go take a look at stuff, um, they'll be on there. And then if you have any questions about setting this up, if you want assistance going through this, the financial fitness is a free benefit of membership with California Coast Credit Union. We will work with you to get that plan set up in place. We'll help you set up those savings accounts. We'll help you create that plan to manage that variable income as a completely free benefit of membership. We never charge whether you meet with us three times or 30, we are here. So are there any other questions that I missed while we are talking? Marilyn, you have a question in the Q&A. Just want to make sure you see that one. There is no option to pay. Um, yep, that's the one. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I will have to get back to you on that one. I don't know that you can. Um, so that is just having a disability insurance in some way. Um, I don't think that you can as far as I know, but but I will look into that and make sure we get an answer back to you if you want to email me trose at calcosu.org um, because it's coming across as anonymous. Um, I'd be happy to get that information for you. What about saving for children's college tuition? So the first thing is to make sure you are covered. Make sure you have that financial security, that base established, the six months of savings. Do that first. And also take care of your own expenses, your own retirement, because your child is going to have options when they go to school. Yes, it's great that you want to pay for them, but they are going to have options. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself first. You know how you go on the airplane, they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Make sure that you have established your strong financial base with the six months of savings, that you have a retirement plan set in place, that you're putting money into it. Because honestly, the sooner you get started with your own retirement, the more money you're going to have. Um, and you can use those funds for education too. But if you don't have a plan in place um, and you want to talk to someone about the children's college tuition, about your own retirement, we actually have a free consultation with financial advisors as well as if you're a member of Cal Coast um, or talk to someone about that to see what you need, when you want to go and get that set up. So, but take care of yourself first. Thank you.